Do you ever wish you could have a life do-over, similar to a makeover or a house renovation? A chance to try something again with a different result? Try Again with Monique is a place where I will give you my take and also hear from you regarding the questions and challenges we all face in life. You will either be inspired to try life again, over and over again, or make some really good lemonade from those sour lemons. Either way, I got you. If at first you don't succeed, try again with Monique. Gaslighting, what is it? Are we talking about stoves and furnaces and pilot lights? Nope. Are we talking about bodily functions? Hmm, not quite. We are instead talking about psychology. Merriam-Webster defines gaslighting as psychological manipulation of a person, usually over an extended period of time, that causes the victim to question the validity of their own thoughts, their perception of reality, or their memories. It typically leads to confusion, loss of confidence and self-esteem, uncertainty of one's emotional or mental stability, and a dependence on the perpetrator. Whew. That was a long description. In a nutshell, gaslighting is when someone tries to get you to question your reality or memory of what happened, usually for their benefit and control. It is at best a form of manipulation and abuse. So what might you hear from the other person if you are experiencing this type of manipulation and abuse? What does gaslighting sound like? Here are some phrases that might help you understand it a little better. You're overreaching. You need help. I didn't do that. You're upset over nothing. You must be confused again. Just calm down. You're so dramatic. I never said that. Why are you so defensive? What are you talking about? It's your fault. You're so sensitive. You always twist things. Stop imagining things. I was just joking. You're remembering things wrong. It's always something with you. Have you repeatedly heard these expressions or heard more than one of them from the same person or persons? If so, you may be in a gaslighting situation. Someone who gaslights you will try to convince you that what you saw, you didn't see. What you said, you didn't say. And what you heard, you didn't hear. They will try to convince you of the opposite as well. What you didn't see, you saw. What you didn't say, you said. And what you didn't hear was heard. Gaslighting is an assault on your mind and on your version of reality. The person who abuses you in this way wants to take away your ability to think clearly and rationally. They want to make you think you're going crazy or that you're already there. They do this so you don't trust anything you believe, anything you heard, anything you saw, or anything you experienced, all for the purpose of controlling you. He who controls your mind, your perception, and your reality controls your life. They will lie, they'll turn people against you, and they'll cause you to defend yourself against accusations that you know aren't true. A great illustration of this type of behavior is shown in the 1944 movie called Gaslight, about a young woman whose husband manipulates her over time into believing she is insane. He tells her she is becoming forgetful. He confines her to the house and tells everyone she isn't well. He tells her she's imagining things when she hears sounds in the walls and sees the gas light on the lamps dimming, all to get her to doubt her sanity so that he can control her. In the movie and in real life, once the victim no longer trusts his or her sanity, they become dependent on the gaslighter and more attached to that person. That is called Stockholm Syndrome, which is another topic for another day. I read that there are 13 sure signs of gaslighting in a relationship. I'm trying to decide if I should read all 13 to you, but I do think it's worthwhile to do so. So here we go. Number one. You no longer feel like the person you used to be. Two, you are more anxious and less confident than you used to be. Three, you often wonder if you're being too sensitive. Four, you feel like everything you do is wrong. Five, you always think it is your fault when things go wrong. Six, 
you find yourself apologizing often. Seven, you know something's wrong but can't quite identify what it is. Eight, you often question the appropriateness of your response. Were you loving enough? Were you understanding enough? Were you too unreasonable? And so on. Nine, you make excuses for the other person's behavior. Ten, you avoid giving information to family and friends to avoid confrontation and conversations about that person. Eleven, you feel isolated from family and friends. Twelve, you find it increasingly hard to make decisions on your own. Thirteen, you feel hopeless and you take little or no pleasure in activities you used to enjoy. Does any of this sound familiar to you? I certainly hope not. Well, let me share my experience with gaslighting. Before I even knew what it was, I had experienced it in at least two relationships. One was where I was publicly embarrassed at a a function by someone who invited me so they could literally take the mic and make disparaging remarks about me. When the person was confronted with their behavior, they said they were joking. I now know this is a classic gaslighting response. Another time, someone told a completely different version of a traumatizing childhood event that I was present for. Their version made me look bad, and of course, it made them look good. This is also a classic gaslighting tactic. I'm really, really grateful that I didn't succumb to either person's version of what happened. I knew, and I maintained my version and my memory of what had happened. So how would you? Res- how should you respond if this is happening to you? Here are some examples. That is not what I said. Don't put words in my mouth just because I'm holding you accountable. I don't have to justify my discomfort. My thoughts and feelings matter. I am not oversensitive and I don't have to defend myself further. This conversation is over. Period. Point blank. So if after listening to today's episode, you suspect or are certain you are being gaslit, I pray that you will not accept the other person's version of reality or their tactics to make you think you're crazy. Trust your instincts and your memory of events and do not waver from the truth of what happened, no matter what anybody else says. Gaslighting is toxic emotionally and psychologically damaging, and it will not end well for you if you continue in that relationship as is. If this is happening to you and the gaslighter refuses to change, The only way out is out. Remember, doors exist for two reasons, to let someone in and to let someone out. You and you alone get to decide how to use the doors of your life when it comes to your relationships. Gaslighting is not a door that should be open in your life. Thank you for taking the time to listen to Try Again with Monique. If you enjoyed today's episode, please take a moment to leave a review wherever you are listening. Please also remember to hit the subscribe button so you can be notified when new episodes are available. New episodes will be posted weekly. Please also like and follow us on Facebook. Try Again with Monique is a production of GM Associates released under Creative Common Attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives, 4.0 international license. Remember, if at first you don't succeed, try again with Monique.